recall that we use the term PNK to give the number of K permutations of an N set. We use N choose K to give the number of K subsets of an N set, and we note that PNK is equal to K factorial times N choose K. One way to think of PNK is that it counts the arrangements of K non-attacking rooks on a K by N chessboard. Here are all of them on a 3 by 5 chessboard. The binomial coefficient a plus b choose a counts the number of northeast lattice paths from the point 0, 0 to the point a comma b. These are paths that start at the point 0, 0 and make their way to a comma b only moving north and east or right and up. A consequence of this is that we saw that n choose k counts the number of binary strings of length n with exactly k ones. In this video, we'll investigate combinatorial identities, which are equalities between two counting expressions. To encounter some combinatorial identities, we'll first investigate the array of numbers called the permutation array. The permutation array is a two-dimensional array, indexed by the natural numbers starting at zero. We'll show the array only up to row 7 and column 7. The entry in row n and column k is given by the permutation number pnk, so it counts the number of lists of size k from an n set. For example, in the fifth row and third column, we see the entry P53, which we can compute to be the number 60. What patterns do you notice in this array? The first thing that I notice is that the last two entries in every row always match. Can you prove this using the formula or some other method? Can you show that all the entries in column zero will be ones and that all the entries in column one will be the counting numbers? Can you find a formula for the entries in column two? Here's a more complicated question. Can you find some relationship between an entry and the two entries above it, depending on which column the entry is in? Here are some examples. Can you see how these four numbers are related or not? Focus on the entry in row six, column four, 360. It turns out that 360 is equal to 120 plus 4 times 60. This suggests that maybe there's an identity that says pnk is equal to pn minus 1k plus k times pn minus 1 k minus 1. How could we go about proving that this identity always holds no matter what n and k are? Let's investigate two techniques of proof called algebraic proof and combinatorial proof to verify the identity we just uncovered. The identity that we'll prove is that for all n greater than 1 and 1 less than or equal to k, pnk equals pn minus 1k plus k times pn minus 1k minus 1, where pnk is 0 whenever k is greater than n. The first technique we'll use is algebraic proof. We'll use the formula for pnk, which is n factorial over n minus k factorial. We'll start with one side and end at the other. So first, let's let n and k both be positive integers with k less than or equal to n. Then apply the formula for p n minus 1 k and for p n minus 1 k minus 1 to get this equality. Notice that we can change the first denominator to n minus k minus 1 factorial and the second denominator to n minus k factorial. Now we can try to get a common denominator by multiplying the first fraction by n minus k over n minus k. This simplifies so that now both denominators are n minus k factorial. We can then add the numerators to get this fraction all over n minus k factorial. Now in the numerator, we can factor out the n minus 1 factorial and we're left with n minus k plus k, but that simplifies to n, so that we now have n minus 1 factorial times n. But n minus 1 factorial times n is just n factorial, and all of a sudden we have produced the formula for p n k. This algebraic manipulation thus verifies the identity. This is a systematic way to verify the identity, but it doesn't always help us know what's going on. So let's try and do this with a combinatorial proof, where we answer a counting question in two different ways. For this problem, let's consider the question how many ways are there to place k non-attacking rooks on a k by n chessboard? For our first answer, we'll use the technique we already know. We just count all configurations by going row by row and choosing positions for the rooks. This results in p, n, k total configurations. 
The second answer uses the sum principle. We break the configurations into two cases where there's a rook in the first column or not. If we don't have a rook in the first column, we are simply placing k rooks on a k by n minus 1 chessboard, which results in p n minus 1 k configurations. On the other hand, if we do place a rook in the first column, then we have k choices for where to put that rook. That removes the row and the column, leaving us with k minus 1 rooks to place on a k minus 1 by n minus 1 chessboard, which is a total of p n minus 1 k minus 1 configurations. We add these two together, and we see that we have combinatorially proved the identity that we wanted by using the sum rule and the product rule in the middle. Since we counted one set of objects two different ways, we know that these two things must be equal. This is known as combinatorial proof. Now let's see if we can find combinatorial identities using k subsets instead of k permutations by investigating the subset array. Just like the permutation array, the subset array is a two-dimensional array indexed by the natural numbers, and again will only show up to row 7 and column 7. The entry in row n and column k, this time, is given by the number of k subsets of an n set, which is n choose k. So for example, if we look at the entry in row 6 and column 4, we see that that should be 6 choose 4, which when we compute the value, turns out to be 15. Let's look for patterns in this array as well. The first thing that I notice is that each row is a palindrome. That means it reads the same forwards as it does backwards. Can we prove this? It looks like column 0 is again all 1s, and column 1 is again the counting numbers. Can you find a formula in this case for column 2? What about a formula for each entry in terms of previous entries? Can you see a pattern between an entry and the two entries above and above and to the left of it, like we've shown here? I think the identity between the elements shown here is a little bit more straightforward than the corresponding identity we saw for permutation arrangements. Let's investigate a couple of the patterns that show up in the subset array. Once again, we'll investigate two proofs, one algebraic and one combinatorial, of a subset identity. The first identity that we'll investigate is that n choose k equals n choose n minus k for all n greater than 0 and k between 0 and n. This identity guarantees that the rows will be palindromic like we saw. We'll proceed algebraically again first using the formula for n choose k. We'll start with one side and end at the other, so let n and k both be natural numbers with k less than or equal to n. First apply the formula for n choose k. Then note that the denominator can switch orders. And finally, note that k can be written as n minus n minus k. But this resulting formula is just the formula that you would obtain if you computed n choose n minus k. Thus we've verified the identity algebraically, just by a couple of computations. Again, this doesn't always show us what's going on. So let's follow it up with a combinatorial proof. Again, we'll answer a single counting question in two different ways. For this theorem, we'll answer the question, how many northeast lattice paths are there from the point 0, 0 to the point a comma b? We'll work an example from 2, 3, but the general theory holds. We can list out all of the lattice paths from 0, 0 to 2, 3. As we saw in a previous video, there will be 2 plus 3, choose 2 of these, so a total of 10. As we also saw in a previous video, when we list out the lattice paths using this method, we can start to see some patterns. We can see that every such path always takes two steps to the right, which are listed in yellow, and three steps up, which are listed in blue. We can encode each lattice path by a sequence then of R's and U's, a binary sequence of length 5. If we have a yellow point of view or a right step point of view, we see that we can list off the places where we take right steps. So the first one is 1, 2, then 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5, 2, 3, 2, 4, 2, 5, 3, 4, 3, 5, or 4, 5. But we could also have a blue step or up step point of view. And then we would list off the locations of where the up steps are, as we've done here. Notice that the yellow steps and the blue steps together form the full five set. So we see that choosing two yellow steps is the same as choosing three blue steps. 
So in general, if we're trying to find the total number of lattice paths from 0, 0 to A, B, there are two different ways to answer this. The first answer is that we're selecting A positions in a binary string of length A plus B for the right steps. The second answer is that we're selecting B positions in a binary string of length A plus B for the up steps. The first answer is A plus B choose A. The second answer is A plus B choose B. And those must be equal since they answer the same question. If we replace A plus B by N and A by K, we get the theorem that we wanted, that N choose K is equal to N choose N minus K. Let's see another example using the subsets or the binomial coefficients that doesn't have as straightforward of an algebraic proof. The theorem that we'll investigate says that for every n or row in the subset array, if we add up the entries n choose 0 plus n choose 1 plus n choose 2 all the way up to n choose n, we get a power of 2, and in particular 2 to the n. This can be proved algebraically, but it is not obvious how to do it just from the formula for n choose k. So let's try and prove this combinatorially. Remember that a combinatorial proof requires us to answer a single counting question in two different ways. For this problem, we will answer the question how many binary strings are there of length n. We'll start just considering of length 4. The first answer is to use the product rule bit by bit. What we mean by that is that if we list out all the binary strings, we see that each bit can either be a 0 or a 1. So our string has length 4, and there are two options for each bit. The number of choices is independent of all the previous choices, so we multiply them together to get 2 to the 4th. The other answer is that we count the strings with k ones, where k ranges over the different values from 0 to 4. When k is 0, we select 0 places from 4 for the ones. When k is 1, we select 1 place from 4 for the ones. When k is 2, we select 2 places for the ones. When k is 3, we select 3 places for the ones. And when k is 4, we select all 4 places for the ones. And we add these together because these different situations are all disjoint. There are no strings in common counted by any of them. Therefore, we see that 2 to the 4th is equal to this sum of binomial coefficients from 4 choose 0 up to 4 choose 4. We can model our general solution when 4 is replaced by n. In the first answer, we again use the product rule bit by bit, but this time we have n total slots for our binary string. In bit 1 we have two choices, in bit 2 we have two choices, and we have two choices for all the bits, including bit n minus 1 and bit n. Since the number at any given stage is independent of all other choices, we multiply these together to get a first answer of 2 to the n total binary strings of length n. For our second answer, we're going to count the number of binary strings with k ones where k ranges from 0 to n. In case 1, when there's 0 ones, there are n choose 0 ways to do it. When there's exactly 1 1, there are n choose 1 ways to do it. When we want 2 ones, there are n choose 2 ways to do it. We can continue this process for each number of ones that we care about, until finally, when we get to the last case, case n plus 1, when there's exactly n ones, and there's n choose n ways to do this. We can add these together because they are disjoint and have no strings in common. Therefore, 2 to the n is equal to n choose 0 plus n choose 1 all the way up to adding n choose n. We proved this identity combinatorially, even though we couldn't prove it algebraically just yet. Let's finish this video with a combinatorial challenge for you to figure out on your own. Here's an exercise for you. Find algebraic and combinatorial proofs for the identity k times n choose k equals n times n minus 1 choose k minus 1. For the algebraic proof, once again, use the formula and start with one side and end at the other. For the combinatorial proof, we need to find the right kind of question and then answer it in two different ways. This can be a challenge. I'm not going to tell you the question, but I am going to show you an animation that might suggest how you might go about this. You might want to think about committees of certain size of a certain set. And then you might want to think about isolating or choosing one person as the leader. What you get are the resulting arrangements here. On the left side of the bar is one way or one method to go about counting it. And on the right side of the bar is an alternate method to go about counting it. So good luck finding the question, and then remember to find two different answers that you're sure give you the exact same count.